think that there's uh, most of the perils of democracy from from lobbying are are not something um, that's exclusive to big business. Um, and I think that any anything that were to address the problems that come from big business would address a, a much wider issue. Um, as far as uh, evidence of uh, improvement of social welfare uh, or, or for corruption, um, I'll admit I did not um, spend a lot of time looking at corruption indices, although I'm aware that such things uh, do exist. Um, but I know that uh, a, a number of, of, uh, of globalized firms uh, in, in local elections in, in South America and in South Asia and in Africa have, uh, if you want to get backed by, um, I, I mean, I just read a lot of BBC and, and whatever, and, and what I see in there is a lot of people pledging to fight corruption because this is a major issue for the international community. And what was the third point? Oh, ev evidence of... Uh, uh, yeah, evidence of worker satisfaction. I, I think that in that department, it, it, there's there's a lot of other variables that come into it. Or some you know some businesses. If, I'm sure that it would be better to work at a, a, a small video rental store, for instance, than um, than Blockbuster. Uh, at the same time, like I worked as a you know as a non-union electrician's assistant for next to nothing under the table, and I also worked in a factory and saw union electricians in a huge multinational factory making thirty dollars an hour. Uh, because they're more subject to OSHA regulations and oversight and things that that are that that are common for big businesses. So I think that there is a lot of evidence of uh, of that. Just want to make one point on the sure. worker. Um, just the one point on the worker satisfaction. I mean, it, it's changing a bit, and, and it's a problem. And I hope it, it reverts back to how it was. Um, you know, there are statistics about how many CEOs actually come from within a company. But I mean, I know, and and, and it is changing. I admit, and but. I know that uh, for a long time, corporations were sort of the gem that you try to, you know, get into when you when you graduate, and that and that was the way to um, lead a successful career. And they have the, the corporations. Um, were the medium for, for mobility in a way because you could rise up the corporate ladder um, and you know you could start as a worker and end up as a manager and they had you know benefits uh, in terms of you know giving them uh, workers stock options and things I mean I know you know GE from for my grandfather as an example a little data I mean he started off a, a lower level um, engineer and and by the time he retired he had you know, 70 or 80 percent of his pay, and, and I think I might have a few of the stocks. And um, so, you know, corporations is um, an opportunity for people to, you know, have mobility and receive benefits that smaller businesses might not, um, might not offer. So. When we started researching this debate, the type of concrete evidence that you asked for was exactly the type of evidence that we had the most trouble finding. Because the type of concrete evidence that your question, I think, implies is goes along the lines of wages and um, salaries and benefits of that nature. And while on average, large businesses may offer higher wages or salaries to their workers, social welfare does not equal money and cannot be measured alone by GDP. So. Um, you need to look at things such as like happiness index to incorporate social welfare. And uh, another point is that large businesses can also eradicate low wage jobs by outsourcing them to other countries. And let's say if you're looking exclusively at America, big businesses only employ um, large salary workers while the low wage workers are working in factories in other countries. And just sort of to illustrate uh, the point Ryan just made, um, uh, Alternate does a lot of investigations into uh, large business and corporate malfeasance, and one they did was actually, sorry to keep on ragging on Walmart, but um, uh, Walmart's uh, line of eco-friendly and human rights friendly jewelry, which is kind of ironically called Love Earth. Um, they don't really love the earth. Uh, uh, it's uh, the, main, uh, the main mine for this jewelry is located in La Paz, Bolivia, and they use a process called cyanide heap leaching, which is which releases one of the most toxic chemicals into the uh, in, in the world into uh, into like local groundwater. And also, um, the employees at the at the company uh, uh, have complained of insufficient pay, strip searches, a lack of masks to protect from air pollution, and supervisors who are always willing to show employees the door if they complain about any of these things. 
um, and also traditional holidays aren't observed uh, by transnational corporations in other countries and worker bonuses are usually not observed uh, especially in, Bol in Bolivia and uh, several other Latin American countries they have a, a year a year bonus called uh, like a year end bonus called an Agualdinal uh, Ag Guinaldo, which is equal to roughly one month's worth of pay, and uh, when workers at the Walmart plant, uh, at the Walmart mine uh, in La Paz, complained about this, um, they were immediately they were immediately let go. So, well, let me let me ask a question now for the other team. Uh, it struck me one of the arguments that was used by Angela, I think, uh, regarding uh, uh, Microsoft having made a huge uh, donation to Japan. And then the conclusion was small business could not do that. Of course they could not, because they are small. Uh, so the question is, uh, once we uh, analyze whether this is a benefit or not, we should take into account uh, the donation uh, as a proportion of something, as a proportion of total sales, uh, total net worth, because by definition, uh, uh, a small firm would not be able to make that donation to Japan. But several of them, of course, could. So how do you react to this? When I was doing my research, I did come across that um, argument, and one of the things that um, we have to realize is, yes, you have to look at donations as a proportion of something else, but you also have to realize that um, even in absolute terms, what the outcome is at, or the results of the donation, the impact that it makes, is what we're really um, concerned about. And as a cluster of small firms, for example, yes, they can contribute to, um, or as much as, or as much as um, a large company would in absolute value, or more in terms of percentages to sales or whatever um, the, the denominator would be. Um, the impact might not be as great as one large lump sum contribution that a large company can make. Because, for example, some small firms might decide to donate um, a proportion of their profits, but they would donate it to another organization like Make-A-Wish Foundation, another larger corporation that would then create the impact that um, these smaller uh, firms cannot do just by themselves, whereas a large company such as Microsoft can make this one large sum um, cash contribution and then have those impacts um, be basically larger. And just to follow up real quick, it's, I think it's also a, a matter of organization and how much organization it would take to gather all the small businesses to come through and um, and be willing to each donate those small parts. And, and I think about situations such as the, the oil spill by BP, and I mean, of course, that was a big business and it was awful that that happened. Um, but I, I, I'm trying to think if it was a lot of smaller businesses, each operating like smaller rigs, I doubt it would be a, a lot more difficult to raise 40 billion, uh, $20 billion for uh, you know an escrow fund than, than tell BP hey, you're responsible, you know, $20 million, and now let's dole this out to all the, the victims. So I think it's, a, it's just a lot e uh, easier to organize um, when it's just one big company rather than a, a lot smaller spread throughout. So. I guess I have another perhaps fairly broad question or comment. Um, I was, I was uh, fairly convinced by, by the argument, I think it was the pros who made it, that, that uh, it may be a mistake to say either big business or small business. Uh, there undoubtedly is a kind of complementarity. There are some activities that um, 
can only be undertaken on a fairly large scale and where it would be somewhat silly to suggest that they should be carried out by a lot of small independent businesses and there are lots of activities that are probably better carried out by small by small businesses. But then having said that, there may be a dimension missing that has come up a little bit a couple of times during the, the debate and that is that we don't have just small businesses and large businesses, we also have government intervention of various kinds and the question is whether to some extent that is um, um, at least as important and I would like to maybe get a few comments from, the, from both sides on this. I mean, one could see it both relating to, to promoting clusters or, or regulating uh, big companies, or one could see it even as promoting growth. Um, I think both sides talked about innovation and how their particular companies promoted, promoted fast growth. But if you look at it, maybe if one looks at, at, at say, U.S. success stories, um, then many, if not most of them, owe a lot to um, state intervention at various stages. I mean, an obvious example is Boeing that came up several times, but even agriculture has that. I mean, I guess the only, the only real sort of strong export sector that comes to my mind that may not owe a lot is Hollywood. Um, so, so I was wondering if, 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 the two, if the two sides have any thoughts on how, on how the state government fits into their vision of small and large companies. All right, I hope this can answer your question. Um, okay, in a capitalist economy, at the end of the day, small and big businesses are going to try and maximize profits. And what we are trying to say is that big businesses, while just like small businesses are trying to maximize profits, their enormous wealth and power allows them to escape regulation, control regulation, and uh, affect laws very strongly. So we would be in favor of government intervention and regulation, also just trying to make sure that state intervention can limit the power of big businesses. And I'd also like to add government research and development has come up with things like the internet and television and have aided greatly to our economy. So I think the state sector plays a very positive uh, role in this debate.